Right, yeah, we'll dive straight in. So obviously, I just said great to speak to you at the start of the, the week before. I can't believe it's game week. I, I genuinely can't believe it's come around this quickly. No, I know. Um, I'm, I think we're like um, kids waiting for Christmas. Um, it's been yeah. it's been a long time coming. Um, from obviously our last competitive game in March, um, but I just think yeah, we're all re- raring to go, and it does feel like yesterday we were in for the start of pre season, then the season starting. But I mean, on the grand scale of things, it has been a long time coming. But yeah, we just all can't wait to hit the ground running. And it's it's unbelievable to think it's been what six months ish since we actually I think obviously the last game was West Ham in February, and that that amount that amount of time has it been quite quite difficult being a uh, off the off the pitch and not in a competitive environment for that long. Yeah, I think you know we being a footballer, you're used to being around twenty girls every day, the staff. And when that when that kind of just got took away from us with without any warning, um, you know, I got back from Spain with Northern Ireland in March. That was my last competitive game, and and then you know I got told not to go into training with Liverpool, and then the next minute, you know, we're we're having to kind of go home and just just wait and see. And I think you know from a mental point of view it's very tough as a footballer being around being around your friends um every day and you know the unknown of how long are you going to be training by yourself and um you know obviously safety comes first and you understand everything that's going on in the world and it's horrific but you know mentally as a footballer it was it was very tough to take especially at the start of the start of lockdown yeah, is in effect your your whole sort of job shut down for a, a, a lot a long period of time when you think about it as, a, as long as many other people as well. But particularly your your job is to to go out and, and play football ultimately, and that was just com- completely shut down. From a fan's perspective as well, it's it's been really strange not to see each week that like you girls going out and, and playing a game and really getting involved in in football properly. But in terms of lockdown itself. How did you find training on your own? Did you was it quite comforting or was it was it quite challenging? I think I try to spin it in a positive. You know, I was very fortunate that you know exercise. It's something I enjoy. I love. I love playing football. So during obviously the uncertain time that was going on, football is an escape for a lot of footballers. So you know, I just had to try and spin it in a positive way and use the time to to maybe work on myself more as an individual, you know, things that I maybe needed to add to my game to then, you know, come back into the football environment. How could I, you know, how could I bring something more for, for the team? Um, you know, we're, we're all individuals, but we fight for each other as a team and, you know, to get, we, we do everything together. So for me, I just tried to, uses motivation to get myself in the best physical place I could um, as well as mentally I think it was a it was a great mental test for for all of our squad um, you know lockdown was very up and down with that as you know what what went on and what we found out in lockdown it's it was yeah. all out of our control so what we can control is is our our physicality and you know working on that and just coming back um when we were allowed to come back in the in the best physical um shape I could yeah in terms of that that sort of coming back into training and that integration again was it was it an easy transition going from sort of your own training to coming back in and with all the girls well it was sort of staggered wasn't it not all of you came in at once so I, I guess it was a bit strange having having that all protocol in place yeah I think at first you know I like I spent lockdown um, up in the northeast and I wouldn't say I was around a lot of people so you know your first day back in training you just want to go and hug hug your teammate but I mean you know we couldn't it was kind of just saying hi from a distance and but I think it's I think the club um, worked very well and eased us all in well and if anything, I think that's brought us more together as a squad. Um, it's made us all appreciate each other 
a lot more. Um, yeah. You know, the contact we did have in lockdown, um, we try to keep together as a squad as much as we could during the circumstances. And being kind of drip fed back into training. Um, I mean, the first the first session that we were allowed to all train together, just like a bunch of bunch of big kids. I think we were just really happy to, you know, see more than two or three teammates and just be together again. Um, you know, and I, I think that just shows already the the togetherness that we have got already this season. Yeah, for sure. Well, moving on a little bit. Um, news came out a couple of weeks ago that. Neve Fahey appointed was appointed as um captain for the season. Uh Stefan in for, for Bradders as she's away um doing an amazing thing back back at home, helping her helping other people. And then yourself been given the uh the vice captain role, which is which is great news. How much does that, that mean to you um to be given such a role and working alongside alongside Neve to help lead the team each week? I think for myself um personally it's a great honour. Um I know a lot about Liverpool. I know how much of a massive, massive club they are, and to be given that extra responsibility this season, I, you know, it's I'm doing something right. If if yeah. you know my manager wants to put that that trust in me, and just to, just to be that soundboard for Neve, and um, you know, help her push push the team on this season. I think me and Neve um, already coming in last year. Me and Eve and Sophie were were quite close. I was in the lead. Vicky um, put us in the leadership group quite early, and I think we all worked well together. And me and Neve have just tried to continue continue that work um, from the start of pre season. And I'm really excited for for the start of the season to to drive Neve on to for us both to drive the team on and for them to push push us on too and you know learn from each other and I think the the one thing I want the team to be this season is more together than than whatever have been and that's what me and Eve well I wouldn't say we've been working hard on and um, because the team have naturally done that this pre-season but it's just us just being there um for the girls anytime they need and just being there for each other and you know setting standards and continuously pushing standards on throughout the season. Yeah, I think when you obviously joined um, halfway through the end of last season, I think us, us from an outsider looking in on, on the team, we, we could already see that you t- you'd taken up a sort of leader style role, especially when, when on the pitch, like the communication from obviously being in midfield from at the top and behind, it seemed that you, you were a bit of a focal point throughout that. So this sort of appointment just sort of solidifies that doesn't it and makes it a, a little bit more official but as I said we could already see it so for all of us it's not like anything's massively changing but it's also like yes okay we've got someone in there as well as Neve that's going to be really really guiding the girls through the game on the pitch and, and, and pulling them in the right direction. Yeah it's uh, it's obviously nice that you know it, it was recognised and you know I, I come into work every day and I, I give I give everything I've got and for that to have been recognised by, you know, Vicky and the coaching staff and puts a lot of confidence in myself as a player and, you know, if your manager and coaching staff are putting the confidence in and you're just going to get the best out of the player and I really think that um, the staff have really helped me um, you know, they've filled me with confidence and I felt confident in helping lead the team and uh, hopefully it does pay off um, but yeah I couldn't do that um, without the, the people around us and the environment I've been put in. No yeah for sure we, we, I think everyone knows how close-knit the whole the the whole squad is and it has been for a few seasons now and I think that's something that Liverpool properly pride themselves on as an LFC family so yeah. in, investing that throughout throughout the team and throughout the whole fan base as well it does feel like a community as, as a whole group rather than as, as individuals and I'm sure it feels like that way on the pitch as well. Yeah it does uh, you know you can we've had a, a very positive pre-season and um, you know pre-season 
up or down at, from it from ourselves in pre-season and um, we tend not to focus so much on the results we we focus on you know are we doing our right jobs the the positives and you know le- things you can learn from games and we have learned a lot in pre-season we are uh, we're building new relationships um, in the team and um, new partnerships and you know it's it's just seeing what works for us and what we need to be better on um and I think that's been the, the focus of pre-season. How can, how can we improve and how can we continue to lift our standards? Um, and being together with that, you yeah. know, I think the, the coaching staff are going to have a headache um, for the first game of the season because all of the players have, you know, they've conducted themselves very well in pre-season and everyone's yeah. fighting to to get that starting shirt and you know in pre-season see if someone's not maybe started but they've come on you, you've seen that impact and everyone is fighting for the same cause and you know we're hungry to play but we're hungry to support you know if you maybe don't get that nod, nod on Sunday we're hungry to that come on and make a difference and um, think of the bigger picture and you know it's a long season and we are a squad and we are very much together. Yeah for sure obviously some new faces been 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 added to the dressing room as well over over the summer some some really good investments there how well have they sort of transitioned into the squad over pre-season and then just naturally in training? I'd say very well and I know when I first when I first came in and Vicky said to me, oh, Fernie, I feel like you've been here for years, you know, so I settled in quite quickly. And I think with the new signings, um, Rachel Law's um, a very good friend of mine. Um, I've knew her since we were little kids. Um, she settled in um, very well. Um, she is, I mean, the confidence she has brought to the, to the whole team from the back line to, to the nine, I, I just think... She's breathing confidence into the team with our experience um, and just overall, she's a fantastic goalkeeper and yeah. we're very lucky that, you know, we were able to get her. Um, so she settled in, settled in great and, you know, Taylor and Amelie, exactly the same. The, we all want the same thing this season, so... Yeah. We all are taking everything on board and wanting to fight for each other and... You know, we were speaking the other day about unselfish runs. You know, Amelie's one of, she is the fittest person on the team and she does a lot of unselfish work. But I think from a player and team perspective, we recognise how hard she's working for us. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just the, the new signings, the, the great additions to, you know, not just squad players, the push and um, getting the start on 11. And we've brought real quality into the team and, you know, Vicky's put our own stamp on things and it's been an exciting pre-season and I'm, I'm just so excited to, to get going. I can imagine. Also, another another appointment obviously uh, announced earlier this week was, was Susan Black in that, in that higher role, um, taking a lead of, of Liverpool women. How much from, from your perspective, how, uh, how much of a role do you think she's going to play going forwards? I think massively, uh, you know, for one, it's great that foundations are getting put in place for, for the women's team. I think, you know, from an outsider point of view, I think that's maybe good for you to see and people from the outside to see, whereas we hear, we could hear a lot internally um, and, you know, we know we're going from, you know, we, we know we're going places. Um, but I think for Liverpool to come out and make that statement is is you know, it's very good and I'm excited for the future of Liverpool women. Um, me and Neve had uh, a Zoom call with her the other day um, after we heard about the appointment and straight away you can just see her passion and, you know, the, uh, she wants to get things done for us. She wants, to, she wants Liverpool women to be up there and, you know, I remember us saying that if she gets everything done off the pitch for us, then then we can do the job on the pitch. Yeah. And I think that that was that was quite nice to hear. Um, and I just think the plans getting put in place is yeah. is very exciting for the future as as well as now. Yeah. Uh, I know even the training pitch, 
before pre-season, I know that got um, improved and that come from, you know, from in Liverpool. So I think little things that we're starting to see and, you know, things that are starting to get implemented is is very exciting going forward for Liverpool. Yeah, it's it's all the it's all the little building box blocks that piece together really, isn't it, to 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 make the, the bigger picture. And I think last season was was disappointing the way that it ended and the way that the, the league concluded. Um but equally I think I think you'll agree as well. It's about moving forward from that now. Obviously, taking that that hurt from from what happened and and how it concluded, and and, and pushing forward. Do you think yourself and the the squad are sort of united in the way that they're they're going to approach this season and and what they want to achieve from the first time in in the championship? Yeah, definitely. I think um it was you know personally it was a very harsh decision that got made um in lockdown and you know all the girls are very disappointed that that happened but yeah you have to try and turn that into you know fire in the belly and you've got to use that as motivation to to try and get back into the double sl um that's why we're you know that's why we play football we want to challenge ourselves against the best we want to be in the best leagues and this season, by no means is it, it's not going to be an easy season. Um, I've played in the Championship. It was the Super League 2 um, before the Championship. I played in it for Sunderland and it's a very tough league. Um, if anything, it in ways it's tougher than the WSL because, you know, the teams that you come up against every week, sometimes it's just a, it's just a group of friends fighting for each other. And it's going to be a completely different challenge. And that's then, you know, focusing on, on ourselves, getting the best out of each other to um, to hopefully overcome these hurdles that we come up against every week. Yeah, I think there was there was a sense of a spotlight on on the, the Liverpool women's team, especially because of what, what happened last season. Do you sort of feel a sense of pressure going as a player going into this season? Or is it something that you're just going to relish and, and really take up this challenge and push to, to get back into the WSL? I think every footballer has pressure. Um, you know, we play every week with pressure. It doesn't matter what team you are. And just happens we play under a massive umbrella of Liverpool Football Club, which is, you know, a massive football club. But I think for, our, for ourselves this season, um, you know, we want to focus on ourselves. We want to take it week by week. Um, we can't get ahead of ourselves. You, you know, it's going to be a, it is going to be a tough year. There's teams investing in the championship. Yeah. You know, Leicester have just went full time. Um, a lot of my good friends play for Durham. They've been up there for years. Sheffield. I think it's it's going to, you know, it's going to be a very a very tough league and. I thrive off pressure. You know, as a footballer, you want to thrive off pressure and you want to be challenged and you want to overcome them challenges. And for us as a team and a squad, um, I think the best thing is to take it week by week and, you know, not get not get carried away and just focus on what, what game we've got that week and, yeah. you know, to keep, keep ourselves together and ju- just working hard and continuing to um, set standards for ourselves. Yeah, for sure. Obviously, you mentioned that Durham up this weekend. With with, with what you, you you know about them, what are you sort of expecting that them to come at you with on Sunday? Obviously, at yeah, Prenton Park got the the home advantage minus the fans, unfortunately. Um, but but how are you preparing? Uh, what kind of game are you preparing for come Sunday? I think we're we're coming up against a team that that don't know when they beat. Um, they've got a. They've got a great group of girls that will fight for each other. You know, they'll put tough tackles in. They put the they put the body on the line for each other, and you know that's that's good to see in a team. Um, it's it's going to be a very a very tough battle. Um, but I, I do hope that you know if we focus on the qualities we have got in our team, and you know some of the individuals, and you know just being together as a team, I'm you know I'm hopeful that. We can get a good, we can get a good result on Sunday. Yeah, I, I just mentioned it then, but a word for the fans. Obviously, for the foreseeable, we're not we, we haven't got an idea of when fans will be allowed into back into the stadiums. 
how much how much of a miss will will fans be on a match day for for as many that there will be before they're allowed to sort of filter back in yeah i think a massive miss um you know, when I first come to Liverpool, I was welcomed with open arms um, from the fans. I remember playing against Arsenal and my name was getting chanted and, you know, it was it was a great feeling. And as footballers, we want to play for the fans. I play for the fans every week and, you know, as a, as a team and as a squad, we're very thankful for the support that we've had during lockdown from the fans. Yeah. Um, and every week we just want to make the fans proud. So as sad as it is, um, I know Sunday's game is on the FA player. Yeah. So the fans can watch. Um, it's very sad, but, you know, the, the main thing is that everyone stays safe at the minute and hopefully the, the fans can join us, join us soon because we're, we're really on the back and we do miss them. Yeah, well, we miss we miss watching it all as well, that's for sure. But thanks so much for your time. Obviously, wish you all the best on Sunday and for the, for the rest of the season as well. And hopefully, we'll all be allowed to, to get back into the stadium soon and, 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 and cheer you on throughout the rest of the season. So thanks very much for, for hopping on. No, no problem at all. Thanks for having us.